Today we're going to look at something that's called experimental probability. And experimental probability is a little bit different from theoretical probability because in experimental probability we perform some kind of experiment to get our results. So let's pretend for instance I've got a bag here and it's full of candy. Three different types of candy. We're going to have blue candy in the bag. We're going to also add into it some red candy and some green candy as well. Now with experimental probability, what you do in your experiment is you actually do something at random. Like I would stick my hand in the bag, pull out candy, record what color it is, and then put it back in the bag. Or in other cases, we could do something like flipping a coin and recording whether it was heads or tails, or if we had a die or number cube, we could roll the die and then record the number in a table. But remember, since it is experimental probability and not theoretical, we have to keep the experiments the same. So if I were to pull a candy out of this bag, I would have to put the candy back into it when I pull again. I want to keep the number the same. So let's say that we performed this experiment and then we got this results. And the results are recorded in this table here. B for blue, G for green, and R for red. Now let's say that after performing the experiment, I pulled a blue candy out four times. I pulled out a green candy six times and a red piece of candy two times. Now we know that we can set this up as a fraction. So in order to get the denominator, we have to see how many times I pulled. And to do that, we just add up all of our numbers. So we've got four plus six is gonna give us 10. 10 plus two is 12. So now I can set all of these probabilities up as fractions with 12 as a denominator. Now that I have all the probability fractions set up, because we know our denominator is going to be 12, because we had a total of 12 poles in our experiment, what we can do is go back and see what the probability will be for each color. So for blue, you know I pulled blue four times, so that's going to be 4 out of 12. Green, pulled it six times, 6 out of 12. And then for red, it's 2 out of 12. But by now we know whenever we have fractions, if we can simplify them, we like to simplify them. So that's what I'm going to want to do next. So 4 into 12, I know 4 is going to go into 4 one time. And 4 will go into 12 three times. So that ends up being 1 third. Here, 6 will go into 6 once and we'll go into 12 twice. So we have 1 half or 50% chance of pulling green. Then for red, 2 will go into 2 one time, but it'll go to 12 six times. So we have one in six chance. And now just by looking back, we know that I have a, the best chance of pulling a green straw, sour straw, because I pulled it six times here. Next would be blue because I pulled it four times, and then red twice. So what this leads me to believe that in this bag, I probably have more green pieces of candy than any other and more red, excuse me, less red pieces of candy than the others because I only ended up pulling it out two times. So the main thing to remember in experimental probability is that you have to perform some kind of experiment. In theoretical probability, what you use is the information that's given to you and you come up with an idea or make a guess on what the probability will be for each event.